Good morning, everyone. Uh, so welcome to session four with us today. So, wow, we've got a lot already, which is great. We thought you guys would be out enjoying the sunshine and doing your homeschooling. Just like my boys are wishing that they're doing theirs today. So we are, we are at 10.30. Should we get going, guys? Maybe. Maybe. Come on, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. So welcome to session four of Friday First Aid Live. We really hope you've had a great week and that you've been enjoying the sunshine. It is amazing out there. But we're actually going to be talking a little bit about the sunshine later. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be doing breaks, burns, and brrrr. So we're going to be looking at temperature stuff. Yeah, so it gets too hot, my body gets too hot, and body gets too cold. We've got loads to go through today. So the temperature stuff at the end, we'll try and get to. If we don't, we'll do it on another one. Um, right, so the first thing is you're on YouTube. Thank you very much for joining us. Really, really big thing. We're trying to get to a thousand subscribers, aren't we? Yes. So we are so, so close. So if you could just hit the subscribe button for us, that would make us that would make our day down below. Yeah, down below. Yes. yeah absolutely. Yes. So that would be yes. awesome. Um, so what you're going to need today is a few bits of kit to help us um, do the do the practical work. Again, there's loads and loads of practical stuff today. So if you can get your grown up to get with you a washing up bowl uh, full of water, or half full of water, with a cup in it as well, that will really help. Um, some cling film as well. So go and grab some cling film out of your your uh, kitchen drawer. Uh, you, that would all become apparent later, Alex. Um, somebody was was obviously not listening on the warm up today. Yeah. So we've got the cutting film as well. Um, if you've got a sling or a triangular piece of fabric, we're going to do some slinging of a broken arm today. Um, if you've not got that, we're going to teach you a little trick. Obviously, with green box, we like the easy ways to do first aid. So I'm going to show you how to deal with that without a sling. So no problem if you if you've not got that. Even if we don't have a safety pin, we'll be able to deal with it. Okay. Um, so as Alex mentioned, uh, cushion, we, if you've got a cushion there and a blanket as well, and we'll be dealing with the hypothermia a bit uh, a little bit later. So we're going to do some shout outs to start with. We had such a great response last week with everybody sending in their fantastic stories, poems. Uh, they did their worksheets beautifully and loads and loads of videos and photos of the choking in particular of making the lungs, which was totally awesome, wasn't it? We had so much fun doing that last week, so thank you very much. So uh, we're going to do a few um, shout outs to start with. Um, can you read those at the top there? We've got them on, on a little Olivia bit Olivia and Olivia from Cornwall. Fantastic. Uh, Freya from Derby, so welcome. I can't read. So Reese, Riley, and Scarlett from Bradford. Uh, and do you want Kaya to get? So that's Katia. Katia and oh, Lacey from Nottinghamshire. So I'm the one with my contact lenses in today. So uh, we'll do some more uh, today as well. Okay, we'll do some more today. Um, so put your shout outs in. We want to find out where you are. We've got a really special shout out to somebody really, really far away in the next lot as well. Um, so we're going to do another competition today. So we'll announce the winner of last week's competition at the end of the show today. So somebody's won a fantastic Little Life Travel First Aid Kit. And we'll do the same prize again for next week as well. So stick around till the end. Uh, loads of really, really good stuff going on. Um, so we're going to have a look at broken bones now. So... Uh, have you ever broken a bone? So I'm sure yes. plenty of you have broken a bone. So we're just going to ask the boys. William, have you broken a yes, bone before? Yes, pinky. You broke a pinky. How did you do that? Tripping up the stairs. Tripping up the stairs. Pretty impressive. Yeah, yes. absolutely. So another very special person. And Alex, what about you? Broke my foot when I fell off my tree house. Yeah, exactly. Well, I think we talked about that in one of the yeah. first sessions, didn't yeah. we? So um, I've broken lots of bones um, over my time. So it's quite common for people to do this. Now, the big thing is we've got to recognise how uh, people break bones. So um, just, just to kind of clear a bit of terminology about how we talk about them. If you hear grown-ups talking about... Um, <laughs> when, and so I've just had a message, which I will go to in a minute. Um, if, I, um, if you've broken a bone, um, you might hear the, the grown-ups talking about either a break or a fracture. A fracture is just a fancy word. It's a medical word for a broken bone. So don't worry, it's just exactly the same thing. So we have different types of broken bones. And adults, the grown-ups and the children, they tend to have different types of bones. There's loads of different ways to break a bone. Uh, so we're just going to demonstrate it. Yeah, um, so can, can you do that? So this is, this is a, a grown-up bone. And William is going to show you what happens with a grown-up normally. Okay, if you can, there you yeah. go. 
So the grown up bones are hard, so they tend to snap or they could twist and, and crack. Now this is a child's bone, okay? And so they tend to but they tend to bend a little bit more. So we get something called what's called a green stick fracture. And it's just literally like a green stick, a young stick from a tree. So they tend to bend more. We treat them exactly the same, but if you if your child has had a, a, a bend or green stick fracture, that might be it. So we've got to tell how somebody has broken a bone. So guys, how would we know if somebody Wouldn't it stop has swelling? Yeah, so swelling it, it is it so it can get really puffy. So any other be screaming like it can hurt, yeah, it can really hurt. So it can hurt just on its own. Can't or it can hurt when we touch something. Sometimes you get a lump in your leg because yeah. like the bones push against your Absolutely. So we get kind of you deformity. It's bad on your shins and yeah. the bone will actually come out of the skin. Yeah, so sometimes we're gonna have quite a lot of gore alerts That's today. A gross alert. That's a gross alert, is <laughs> it? So yeah, so sometimes we can see it. Sometimes what if, if somebody's broken their leg, their leg might look different, okay? So it might be that it's pointing in a different direction, or it might be that it's shorter than uh, the other leg. So we're looking and for, for lots of... Frozen, so they can't move it. Yeah, so a lack of if movement. If they do, it could make it worse sometimes, yeah. so it's better to just keep them still. Yeah, so, so we're looking for loss of power, uh, regular movement, and then it looks different. Swelling, bruising, that sort of thing, pain and tenderness. Uh, sometimes, one of the biggest things when I've dealt with broken bones, the person has actually said to me straight away, I've broken my arm. They know, okay, it hurts and they may have felt it or they've heard it as well. Uh, sometimes, like the stick, when a bone, break, uh, when a bone breaks, it, a it cracks, okay, sometimes you hear it as well. Mm. So the biggest thing, though, with a broken bone, some of them are very, very difficult to tell. And what we've got to learn as first aiders is that we, we want to give you the best kit as possible. However, we can't give you x-ray vision. Okay, I'd love as first aiders, so we can't see what's going on in the body. Be a bit good. That would be really Sometimes cool, wouldn't like, it? With yeah. my pinky, it took about, I don't know, five hours for actually to start swelling. Absolutely. So yeah. it takes sometimes a bit of time. I have no idea about yeah. the foot stuff timing. Yeah, exactly. And, and actually, it took quite a long time for us to take to hospital, didn't you? Because you were hobbling around on it, you were walking on it. Um, so sometimes it's not very obvious. The I big... didn't walk on my leg. Yeah, you were still walking on it, you're hobbling around. So one of the biggest things to remember is that if we even suspect that, it, that it's hurt, we want to get them to go to hospital and have an x-ray. Something like a sprained ankle or a sprained wrist, um, they look the same as a broken bone. It's, we just can't tell, so always get them to hospital if we suspect that it's a, a broken bone. Uh, right, so we're gonna have a look at what we do. Now we're gonna separate the body into two different sections. We've got the lower body and the upper body. If we get, if, we, if you put your, those long legs out, if we think that William has broken his leg, we're gonna, the, the biggest thing that we do with broken bones is we keep them still. Okay, so we're just gonna make William really nice and comfortable. Don't we eat? Yeah, so we might, what we're not gonna do is move that. So we might just put this behind William, uh, and then just so that he's not gonna move his, his leg, what we can do, you can have a go at this at home with your uh, grown up or with Teddy, is I'm just gonna make this comfortable, okay? I'm just gonna put something either side of his leg. You're gonna help me there, Alex. And just so that William is really nice and comfortable, and we're going to call what number? Nine nine nine. Nine nine nine. Or one one two. One one two. two. Fantastic. And now William is nice and comfortable. We're going to keep him warm. Don't give them anything to eat or drink. It just might mean that William might be sick. So we're just we're just going to leave him as he is and wait for the paramedics to come, and they'll take away. I can't move William without making that worse. So we're not going to do that, are we? No. Fabulous, what super happens easy. What if the bone shatters? What do you do then? Well, we unless we can see it sticking out of the skin, we won't know that, okay? Um, so we're just going to leave it where it is. you see it? Because if the bone shattered, there won't be any bone to make it move. So absolutely. So that's... It must be like all limp. Yeah, absolutely. So it might be pointing in the wrong direction. It might be. It might so have it, like a like like down there. Yeah. Like the tree, which secrets from his arm goes. A little bit like where they removed the bone in Harry Potter. Yeah. So a little yeah. bit like. Now, the, the big thing is, is no matter what the boat, what the leg looks like, we're going to do exactly the same. Just keep it still. So for us as a first aider, 
it's really easy to deal with. We just keep him calm, reassure him, tell him everything's going to be okay and look after him, okay? We're not going to move that leg at all. Now, if we... Are we going to go into burns? We're going to do burns in a minute. Yeah, absolutely. So, that's the lower leg. Now, if it's a upper arm one, we're going to do something um, called a sling. Now, me as a first aider, if I can avoid doing slings, I do, I do avoid them. They're quite hard to remember. Um, but we like doing them in first aid classes because they're quite fun. So we're going to pretend now that William has broken his arm. So William's holding his arm here. Now what we can do straight away, just to wait, make William a bit more comfortable, is just get something nice and soft underneath his arm just to support it. Just to make him, it's all about keeping them comfortable and not moving that arm. So we use something in first aid called a sling, which is just a triangular bandage, okay? Are you keeping yourself nice and comfy? Alex is moving on to session two already, but we'll come to Alex in a minute. He's super, he's super good. Now, what we need to remember with a sling, it's a triangle, okay? And we've got a long side, which is called what in maths, William? You know more about this than me? Hmm. Okay. <laughs> we promised him no homework this morning. I'm going to keep on promise. Uh, and then we've got a long end and we've got a point. We always go point to joint. It's always the point to the elbow. But with this sling, we want to go underneath, so we're going to put it in the little gap here. And I'm just going to slide that up, and then the long side of the bandage always goes on the opposite side of the body. Okay, so you can see that there. Mm -hmm. So we've still got behind the arm, we've got the point, and the long side always goes on the other side. I'm just going to sit that under his hand. His hand's quite heavy, so when I lift this, I want to support it. Where? I'm not going to move it there. And then we just get this side of the bandage, and it comes up on the opposite side of his head. And we're going to show you a really cool little trick with this bandage. All right? And then we're just going to tie a, a double knot on the back of his neck. All right? So relatively snugly. We want it to be supported. So I want you, if you've got this at home, to have a go with this. It's easier to follow me along with it. And try not to trip your patient. Absolutely. Try not to choke your patient. Now, we do that with our scarves? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So we did, we cut with cuffs. So... Uh, we've done actually a separate video for any cubs, beavers, and scouts to gain their stage one emergency aid badge. If you have a look on the YouTube channel, it's on there. So that's, uh, and it's got a certificate to show their leaders. Now, what I'm doing with the corner of this, if I could just get you to turn around a little bit, William. Instead of using a safety pin here, this, we've got a flappy corner here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to twist this. Now, this is a really magic trick because what it does is it tightens the whole of that sling up. Ah, ah, ah. Okay, as you can see, and it keeps it really supported. Once I've twizzled, all we're going to do is just roll that in and tuck it into there. And William, how does that feel now? Uncomfortable, I know. Okay, so I'm William said it's uncomfortable. So we're going to listen to William. Not often that I do that. So I'm just going to get something nice and soft because I think it's the knot that's actually pointing into his neck. And I'm just going to put something soft underneath his neck. Better. And that's going to make that better. So always, always listen to what your patient's telling you. Um, they'll give you the information about what you need to do. Okay? So fab sleep. We want you to have a go with that one. And before we move on to the next thing, we're going to do some shout outs. Okay? So just whilst you're getting your, your sling done. Right. So we've got, I uh, always can't see these top ones. Uh, so Amelia, Lucy, Leach from Leighton Buzzard, Bertie and Wilk from Edinburgh, Elliot Gray from Chesterfield. Uh, and Lewis and Martha in Sydney. Sydney, Australia. We've reached the other side of the world, which is incredible. So we know that those guys aren't watching live, but they are going to be catching up their event now. So, um, so welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much. So we've had North America uh, and we've had Australia uh, and uh, the Middle East as well, which is incredible. Um, right, so um, Alex showed you earlier. Now, this is probably the way that I prefer to deal with things. Uh, do you want to have it on, William, or do you want us to do this on you? Yeah, so let's just take this away. So what, William, what Alex has done, and he's made himself really, really comfortable here, and this is where just a really simple safety pin will come in, into play here. So what Alex has done, he's just rolled up his T-shirt. Okay, it actually makes, if you grab your T-shirt and roll it and it goes over the elbow, if you look at that, it actually makes a perfect sling. And, and what we don't want to do is move a broken bone, so this is the easiest way to deal with it, okay? So all we would do here with Alex is just get this into his T-shirt and just put a safety pin in there just to support it. 
Okay, and we would do that. So quite often, uh, um, I do first aid for the under, uh, are we now? Under 11s? Under 11s at Wings of Rugby on a Sunday morning. And if any of the boys um, tend to hurt themselves, they've actually got stretchy microtops. So we just pull them up and they can actually stay there and support them. Oh, Alex, <laughs> should we leave you like that for the rest of the session? Yes. <laughs> So, so every, yeah, you want to keep it like that. Um, so the message I laughed at earlier is we're supposed to be on rugby tour uh, to, today, um, and so Chris, one of our uh, one of the coaches there, sent me a message saying, "Where is my outfit?" Um, which, believe it or not, Chris, I am going to be wearing on here next week, and I'll explain that at the end of the show. But Chris and the Campbell family, really good to see you. Um, right, so broken bones actually. A pretty straightforward. We just kind of uh, what we call a mobilizer. We're going to keep it still, and then we're going to get them to hold it. So get a sling on or support it. And a lot of the time, if they're not too uncomfortable, we can get them to hospital. It's normally quite. Uh, it's normally quicker. Uh, if you call nine 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 for a broken bone, a broken arm, or something like that, uh, it can be a long wait, three to four hours, uh, because the paramedics are obviously dealing with things that are a bit more serious. So being able to do this can. Uh, get them treated quicker. Okay, so really, yeah, let me do that for you, Bugs, okay? No, it is, it's quite tricky. Doing it on yourself is a bit harder than doing it on yeah, yeah, absolutely. Really oh, don't worry, that won't come out more. <laughs> so, but, so that is broken bones. So well done for everyone for doing that. I hope you got on really well with those things. These are great things to practice at home. Uh, so have a go on your grown up. We want to see loads of pictures of those fantastic slings, okay? Really, really cool. Um, right, going to look at birds now. We do have a bit of a gross alert, uh, a gore alert uh, today. So birds, the biggest thing with birds is don't burn yourself, okay? Our, our danger detectives are really important on this, aren't they? So what kind of uh, things can burn us? Oh, soup that just come out of the... Okay. Out of the oh, microwave, I think it came out of the Yeah, out of the uh, yeah. I touched a, a, a hob that I thought was cold, but it was actually hot. Yeah. It had just been on. So it hot things. Stupid. Yeah, so hot things. Hot food, hot water, hot drinks. Cold things, cold things. yeah. Do you, want, do you want to pass the... We, we've got a question here for you. So um, we want to oh. see some answers on the board. So send your answers in. So um, what can burn us? So answer A is... Answer William. Something hot, cold, or chemicals. B. A Chinese burn from my brother. Playing too many Xbox games. Are you sure that that can burn you, William? Xbox games? Because mm -hmm. you're the expert at playing too many, yeah? Yeah. Yeah? So what do we think the answer is? Is it A, something hot, cold, or chemicals? Is it B, a Chinese burn from my brother? Believe it or not, there was one this morning. Um, and, <laughs> and C, what's yours, Alex? A. Playing too many Xbox games. So, so, our studio manager, what answers are we getting there? A. We're getting lots of A. Brilliant. It is hot, cold, and chemicals can burn us as well. So, um, with that, loads and loads of different things. Cold things can burn us as well, which we tend not to think about that. Believe it or not, again, my boys have been a brilliant example this week. We had a cold burn in the house this week. Alex, what happened? <laughs> with the ice oil on your tongue. Oh, so I was eating an ice lolly Not and really my tongue it, yeah. got stuck to the ice lolly. Absolutely. No, you were kind of trying to get your tongue to stuck, you're going like... <laughs> but it was, it was completely it stuck to the ice lolly. I've never but seen one. Take it off. I've never seen one like that before and it literally wouldn't come off. Um, but we'll tell you how we treat that when we treat it with burn. So hot it's and up. cold, we treated it with water, didn't we? Absolutely. Um, and also chemicals as well. So things like bleach, um, uh, so chemicals can, can burn your skin as well. So... Um, the depth of the burn, what we're going to have a look at, when we look at a burn to see how serious it is, we're going to have a look at a couple of things and we're going to show you a gross alert. Okay, so if you get something like sunburn, which is red skin, okay, with no blisters, we can normally deal with those at home. Okay, we deal with them all the same way. Now, if you get something where you get blisters, okay, they're a bit more serious. It really hurts, yeah, absolutely. So, but we might get something, and this is where our gross alert is. So, either way, this, you might get a burn that looks like this, okay? So pretty, pretty grim. Now this has gone through the skin and you're starting to see what's underneath it. Now that is a gross alert and Alex really doesn't like that, do you, Alex? So 
Who got I've actually done a video this morning of how to make that wound. We are using our Thursday classes quite a lot, quite a lot of uh, fake wounds. So let me treat you with something called this. We are. We're going to come to that in a second. So, um, so I've, I've done a separate video that will be on the YouTube channel to have a look how I made that this morning. It takes five minutes, really. Now we've got to have a look at burns. Uh, see how big it is with a child. Anything if it's broken the skin. Anything bigger than a 50 pence piece, we're going to get them to hospital, okay? Really, really important. Burns, and probably the thing in first aid I don't like the most, um, they get infected really quickly, they scar really badly, they're quite pe yeah, very painful. Yeah, really, really painful. I actually yeah. touched um, uh, a burn once, and I was like, oh, that hurts. Yeah. And then we make mistakes sometimes, don't we? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so, so we burn ourselves. I was trying to go, I was, hand, I was just having a suit, and it just came out of my microphone, and I dropped loads of cheese, and it splashed, and it splashed over everything. Yeah, absolutely. We had and to I treat had it. an X. You did, yeah, absolutely. An S, so it. we're going to have a look at how we treat it. Now, the biggest thing with birds is if you can put some gloves on, um, try not to breathe on it, they get really infected. Um, but cool water, cool, cool water. We want to get to the tap, not cold water. Cool water. So we've not got the tap here, obviously. So William's going to treat my really, really bad burn. And so we're just going to use this and just get some water on it. So I want you at home. I know you guys have got water here. And we're going to keep doing this. So keep doing it. Keep keep cooling that down. And what we do is we just make it cooler. And the burn stops, starts to hurt less. And it will stop doing damage. Because if we leave it, the burn will get worse and worse and worse and worse. Really, really important. Too you can't get Absolutely. So that's a really good point. So if somebody's really badly burned, we don't want to stick them under a cold shower. We just want to cool the burn, not cool them, because you could put them into hypothermia. Which and how long are we going to do this for? Is how long are we going to do? Twenty minutes. But we're, if they still we're kind of well, absolutely. Yeah. So we've got to keep them warm whilst we're doing this. Tw a minimum of twenty minutes. To cool that down, so and then when we've done that, minutes, yeah, you might need cling film from your kitchen drawer is the best dressing for, for, for this. Okay, it. so all we would do is it's sterile, but the bit that's been in our kitchen drawer is not sterile, so we're going to tear that off, and now we're going to just layer it really loosely. So don't wrap it around tight, Alex. Oh, I've forgotten one thing if they've got anything like this, take, take it, off. it off. Okay, we want to get anything that might. When it's going to swell shock. up. It could cause an electric shock as well. Because okay. the water so just tear it now. Okay. There we go. And so that's what that's done now is just by putting it loosely over the burn, we've actually created a layer of skin which is going to stop that getting infected and then we would be able to get them off to hospital. Okay, so two or three layers just of mm. skin. But don't wrap it round really tightly because otherwise that's going to swell up and it might start to restrict the blood and, the circulation and that we talked about like on this. session two. Yeah, yeah, I think I think they, they might not like that. Yeah, they're all hurt. So ah. burns, if you can remember that for the worksheet, definitely 20 burns, burns. a minimum of 20 minutes or until it stops hurting. So we are just going to do a couple more um, uh, shout outs. So Alex, I want you to do the very top one for me. St. Edward's first school, Maya. Tara, Max, Miss Wright, and Miss Berry. Fantastic. Uh, we've got uh, Willow and Zachary Allen in St Albans. We've got Jennifer and Thomas in Compton. Okay. Uh, Alex, do you want to do the next one? Ben, Sam, and Austin in Wakefield. Wakefield. We've got Finley and Maisie. Katie and Evie on the world. Fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us today. So really quickly, because we are coming up to the end of it, we're just going to have a look at um, hypothermia and uh, heat exhaustion. Now, your body can get into a lot of trouble very, very quick, quickly with temperature. Only two degrees up or down, and your body can, um, can get into problems. So hypothermia just means it's a really long, fancy word for getting too cold. So we see this quite a lot, actually, uh, and uh, most of us have had mild hypothermia. Now, what happens What happens when you get cold? What does the body do? It starts to shiver. Start to shiver. Oh, Absolutely. Blue lips as well. Yeah, so they go blue, kind of grey, and they start to get drowsy, and they get cold, and they slow down. Okay? And then the heart yeah. stops. And then literally yeah. that will keep going, keep going, keep going until, until, they, the until they fall stops, asleep. Like, yeah, their absolutely. heart freezes. Until they lose consciousness. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I see 
Hyper, mild hypothermia when we go to Legoland, okay? Yeah. Why do you think we, I see mild hypothermia when we go to Legoland? I was saying like the pirate, the, not the, the, what's it called? The low moon thing where you like go down the thing and you get water. Oh, the, well, there's that. The one I'm thinking about is the dredge towels. Um, so the kids go in there, the water's four degrees, and they come out and they're doing this, okay? Now that is, and you've probably seen this at the British seaside, the kids are in mild hypothermia. So all we do there wait, is... You mean like look at you when you go down, <laughs> and reach the hill? Uh, no, no, you know the dredge towels, you know when you go in, in your swim shorts yes. and you go in and the, and the water falls on you and you get squirted. Yeah, that that, I love that. One. Yeah, really, really good one. <laughs> I love so it. all so we fun. do with hypothermia is we do everything quite slowly. Never ever put them in a warm bath. We're just going to get a blanket. Alex, can you wrap yourself up in a blanket? Okay, hey. fabulous. <laughs> Wrap Teddy up, let's see you treat for hypothermia, and we're going to warm him up. The big thing is, is that we take him away from the cold area. So we would take him out of the water. And take put him in a microwave. No, that may not be the best idea. <laughs> oh. I don't think he'd fit these days. Um, <laughs> oh. but, what, but what we do is we take them out, we dry them, take any wet clothing off, new warm clothes, oh, a warm blanket, and the best thing by mild hypothermia, is hot chocolate. chocolate yeah. Hot chocolate. Get hot chocolate. Warm, let's start warming them up from, from inside. Now, what happens if we get too hot? What does your body do if you get too hot? Burn. It starts going start red. red. Yeah, so the red. sun is really and important. You start sweating. Sweating. We sweat, yeah, so the body starts sweating to cool us down. Now, that's the body. That's the, that's the mild one, okay? So we've all had that where we start sweating, we get a bit of a headache, we get cramp. We have a loss of appetite. We might feel a little bit sick as well. What do you think we could do for somebody that looks like that? That's sweating, it's a bit red. That's uh, Sorry, that this one goes a bit pale to start with. Put them in the fridge. Yeah. We're going to cool them down, aren't we? Yeah, Give absolutely. them a nice Cool them down. A cold drink. No, lots no, and lots of water. Like and it might be that we put like a cold towel or something on the back of their neck. Something like that. Yeah, like but get them out of the heat. That, with... with uh, the temperature related things, all we do is we get them out of the environment. That's the most important thing. I'm really quite cold. Now, if the person stops sweating, the body is saying it's had enough, okay? And that's when it starts to get really serious. And we, need, we need to call 999. And they normally go, oh, and they normally go really red faced, but their skin goes dry because the body's saying, I've had enough now. And I'm going to keep the water that I've got. It wasn't working. And so if they stop sweating, and they start getting a really bad headache, and they might have a Your seizure. Can speak. That can speak. It talks to you, it tells you exactly what to do. So with the temperature ones, get them out of the environment, with hypothermia, slowly warm them up, and with heat exhaustion or heat stroke, we want to get the temperature down quite quickly, okay? But keep an eye on them. Any doubt, obviously we're gonna get a grown-up to help us with all of our first aid, that's really important. Um, and in any doubt, we'll, we can call 999 and, uh, and get them to help us, okay? Fabulous, we've covered so much today. Um, I really didn't think we were going to get through all of that. So today we've done about broken bones, we've done um, we've done burns, and we've looked at hypothermia, heat stroke, and heat exhaustion. So we hope you've really enjoyed the practical work. Have a go with those. We want to see loads of pictures of you treating the burn, wrapping with cling film, uh, of the slings that you've done as well. Let's see some of the grown-ups up, up in slings, that would be great. Now, um, the, we were going to stop at session four just because um, we thought you guys would have enough, to be honest. But we, we've got so many uh, requests and so, many, uh, so much positive feedback that we're going to do another one. We're going to do the defibrillator session. We've got the defib. Me. Live next Friday. So we're going to teach you, and we're going to make one of these as well. And make one. So I will leave on Facebook what you're going to need to make a defibrillator, and we're going to be shocking Teddy next week. Now, we've got after, that We have. We're going to come to that. So after next week, after next week, you're going to be first aid superstars. So next week, we want you guys to come as superheroes. We're going to dress up as superheroes. And Chris Calvert, I want pictures, okay? So we are, we're going to be superheroes next week. So join us next week, it's going to be loads of fun. We're going to teach you how to do the deeper later. So our certificate that you can, that you can get for, for this week is a nice bright yellow one. So get onto our Facebook page. At 11 o'clock on our Facebook page, there's going to be a post with how to get your certificate. We've got a, a brand new worksheet with some, got some more questions. 
I'm now getting cool. We've got um, another page for us about first aid in the future. We want you to be imaginative with that. And I've taken some really bad pictures of my first aid kit, and I want you to tell me what they are, okay? So, uh, we have a prize winner for our competition last week, who is Freya. Okay, I'm well done, like Freya. Can I read it out? Do you, what? Can I read it out? Yeah, yeah okay, so you read that out, okay? Lockdown, lockdown, green box, green box, trying to get down. Friday, 10.30, learn how to help the party. Paul Alex William, two, they teach us what to do. Danger, danger, check for danger. Time to be a first aid ranger. Cut some leads, how to stop. What's inside that little green box? Problems with breathing, it's no trouble. We can help on the double. Fantastic, Fred. We love the poem, really love it. That was really and good. what I love was the first aid rangers. And what I think I'm going to use that actually, I think I'm going to call you guys my little first aid rangers. So thank you, Freya. Uh, you've You'll got one of these coming your way. So if Freya's mum, Jessica, if you can, drop me a quick message um, with your address. They might be a little bit delayed going out, obviously, because I'm trying to avoid the post office at the moment. Uh, but we will get that to you. Great little prize. And for our best uh, worksheet from this week, or the best photo it could be, we've got another one of those little live first aid kits. These are awesome kits. If anyone wants to buy one of those, I'll leave a link uh, on the YouTube channel as well. Oh, they're not too much. Under about uh, seventeen pounds, I think. Okay. Awesome. So, thank you so much for joining us, our first aid rangers. A uh, big thank you to Alex and to William for their help today. And we'll see you same time, same place, Friday, ten thirty here on YouTube. And we're going to be doing the defibrillator next week. So, have a brilliant week, and we'll see you there. Thanks very much.